Anatoly, it's wonderful to have you here on here with us on Israel National Radio. I want to welcome you on the show. I think a good place for us to begin is you were fighting for the Russians and you were the first man to liberate Auschwitz. Did you or your men have any idea what Auschwitz was when you were about to liberate it? Is there anything that could have prepared you for what you were about to see? Нет, мы не имели представления об этом лагере никакого. И нам наше командование ничего об этом не говорили. Мы просто наступали. No, we had absolutely no idea about the existence of this camp. Our commandment didn't tell us anything about it. We were just advancing and on our way there was the city of Auschwitz. But we did not know that we're in the proximity of the biggest and the most horrible concentration camp Auschwitz. Um, you know, you're speaking to many thousands and thousands of people around the world. Uh, Anatoly, and it's so important, you know, that your message and your testimony is heard, your your story is told, and that's what I'd like to do with you here on air. What did you think that you were going to, when you were coming to Auschwitz, what did you think you were coming to? What did the soldier, you were, you had been fighting for a long time. I assume you've lost many men on the way to Auschwitz. When you came there, what did you think you were liberal opening? What was there? Нам, офицерам и солдатам, особенно моего батальона, который первый сюда вошел, никто не говорил, что там есть концлагерь Свенцем. Уже только в 20-х числах января нам we, the officers and the soldiers, especially our battalion that was the first to enter there, we were not aware that there was a concentration camp. A little after the 20th of January, Polish people began to come out of their basements and hideouts, and we asked them, what is there, what is that camp? They replied, that's the place where Germans kept the Jews. Tell me this, as best as you can describe when you marched into Auschwitz as a Russian soldier, help us understand what did you witness first? What did you see? Рассказываю. Первое, что когда мы вошли, это на рассвете 27 января 45 года. Подходы к лагерю. We entered in the dawn of January 27, 1945. The entrance to the camp was heavily mined, and we had to remove the mines at the entrance to the main gates. It took us three hours. At what point did you realize that that what you had now gone into was what we now know was the worst place on earth where the worst crime in human history had taken place? What did you see that you realized that there was something very terrible here? Мы увидели людей, которые стояли в полосатых робах, прямо человек и не человек, одни кости, скелеты. Они не могли повернуть головы, они группами стояли. Мы им говорим, Красная Армия вас освободила, а они никак не реагируют, потому что они не могут повернуть голову, они не могли разговаривать даже. Но некоторые что-то понимали и чупали нашу одежду, наши шинели, чтобы как бы удостовериться, что да, это Красная Армия. Они были до того ужасны, но одни кости, просто не люди, а скелеты, на которых we saw people who were standing in striped robes. They did not look like humans. They were skeletons. They couldn't even turn their heads. They were standing in groups. When we told them that the Russian army liberated you, they didn't react because they could not even turn their heads or speak. Some of them understood and started to touch our clothing to make sure that we are indeed the Russian army. They looked so horrible, only bones, just skeletons on which was hanging a robe. They did not have shoes or boots. Their feet were wrapped in old clothing. It was January, and the snow was melting, and they stood there with their feet wrapped in these old clothes. Until this day, I just can't imagine how they could survive. You know, um, you'll forgive me. I, I'm, I've been doing radio for a very long time, and I'm almost, I can't speak. I'll try my best here. Um, you had seen the horrors of war. You had seen men die, your own men under your command, die in battle. Um, I, I assume that probably nothing could have prepared you 
for what you you would see next. Uh, you went into the barracks where men and women um, were kept. What did you see there? Мне 92 года, а когда я вошел в концлагерь Освенцим, было 32 года. И я все помню. Вот так Господь Бог дал мне возможность память и все помнить. Там было 100 бараков. Нам дали задание осмотреть эти бараки. Мы подошли к одному бараку, самому первому, написано, для женщин. Мы открыли ворота и увидели страшную картину. При входе в барак лежали трупы женщин, голые совсем. Одежду с них сняли, те, кто еще был живой, сняли с них одежду. Там I am now 92 years old. I entered Auschwitz when I was 32. God gave me this ability to remember everything. There were 100 barracks. Our task was to inspect all barracks. We approached the first barrack. On it it was written that it was for women. We entered and saw a horrific picture. In the entrance, there were laying dead naked women. Their clothes were removed by those who were still alive. There was blood and human excrement. There was such smell that it was impossible to stay there for five minutes. My soldiers couldn't handle it and begged me to leave, but I had a task which had to be completed. In all barracks for men and children, there were dead bodies and blood, and there was such smell that it was impossible to stay there. Um, tell, if you would, our listeners around the world, and to those of you just joining now, you're listening to Anatoly Shapiro, a 92-year-old man who 60 years ago led Russian troops uh, to liberate Auschwitz. I assume that all of you wanted to help these people to live, what did you do to help them? Тут же сразу были развернуты кухни и начали для заключенных варить такой легкий суп из банной крупы и немножко жиру. Но вы верите, что даже когда они покушали, некоторые из них умирали. Настолько Immediately we opened the field kitchens and we started to cook light foods. But could you imagine that when people ate it, some of them died because their stomachs could no longer function normally? The soldiers that were accompanying you, um, did they, what were their comments? I, I understand that some of the Russian soldiers that were with you um, could not bear to be in Auschwitz and wanted to leave to go out because they couldn't bear what they were witnessing. Is that correct? Да, русские солдаты, ну и все мы у нас в батальоне, два еврея было, я и еще один, а так было в основном русские, белорусы были, украинцы были. Они говорили, что надо всех немцев уничтожить. Злость была очень большая по отношению к немцам. Yes, Russian soldiers, and all of us in our battalion, we were two Jews, most were Russians, we had Belarusians, we had Ukrainians, we were all very angry. The anger was tremendous toward the Germans, and the soldiers wanted to kill them all. But we had to explain to them that not all German people are fascists, and not all of them are responsible for the horrors that Nazis committed. At Auschwitz, there were so-called hospitals that were used to experiment on Jewish victims, uh, Dr. Mengele was notorious for his medical experiments on twins. Did you see, did you witness the hospital at Auschwitz that was used to perform these atrocities against Jewish children and twins? Уже госпиталей как таковых не было. Немцы все уничтожили, в том числе и тех, кто был в этих госпиталях. Кроме того, 18 числа... At that point, those hospitals didn't exist. Germans destroyed everything, including those who were in the hospitals. In addition, on the 18th of January, Germans assembled all the people they could find. Our services estimated about 10,000, and the Nazis marched them, naked and hungry, to a different camp, but none of them survived. They all died on the road. If you could give a message to the people who are listening to you right now, Anatoly, um, thousands of people, oh, most of us are not old enough to have witnessed this atrocity. What message could you give our listeners? 
Я хотел бы сказать тем людям на земле, не допустите того, что было с нашим поколением, чтобы больше не повторялись со свинцами, майданики и тремблинки. Сейчас вы имеете в своих руках радио, телевидение, интернет. Надо объединить усилия. I would like to say to all people on earth. Don't allow to happen what happened in my generation, so the Magdanex, Auschwitzes, and Treblinka's will never repeat again. Presently, all people have access to radio, television, and internet. It is necessary to put all efforts to prevent this tragedy from happening again, because anti-Semitism and terrorism are raising their heads in all countries. We have to stand in the path of anti-Semites and terrorists, so the crimes of fascists could never be repeated. Let me ask you this question, Anatoly. Uh, when you, when the war was over and you were turned back to Russia, were you able to tell what you had seen and what was the response of the Russians when you told, described what you had witnessed? Я скажу, что с разоблачением фашистов и тем, что в концлагере установлено было, что погибло 3 миллиона человек, а потом президент Польши Валенса и остальные начали уменьшать. Это было в их интересах, что ли. Сейчас числится 1 миллион 600 тысяч умерщвленных людей в печах, заморенных голодом. Вот я и спрашиваю, кому нужно было уменьшать беспрерывно количество загубленных людей? After the atrocities of Nazis have been revealed, the number of murdered people in that camp was counted to three million. And then the president of Poland, Valencia, and the rest started to decrease the numbers. I guess it wasn't their interest. Now they say that one million and six hundred thousand were murdered, burned in ovens, died in hunger, and I'm asking them why did they have to continuously decrease the number of murdered people? That's the first point. Secondly, I want to say that I saw those ovens and killing machines, and I saw the ashes that were spread by the wind. It was January, there was snow, and ashes were on top of it. When the war was over, I published in the press, but there was absolutely no reaction at all. Just a question for you, Anatoly, and thank you for uh, for sharing these very powerful uh, events that you had witnessed. Did it, this affect you? I mean, here you were a Jew, a, a Russian soldier who was a Jew, a commander, and you lived through, you witnessed Soviet communism and watched its downfall. And How did this affect you as a Jew living in a godless communism? What impact did it have on you? Я от советской власти много горя натерпелся. Это другой рассказ, но я скажу, я все время выступал по радио, по телевидению и здесь, в Америке, против антисемитизма и против того, что я видел в Освенциме. Но я скажу, что даже еврейские организации... I had a lot of bad things from the government, but that's another story. But I will say that I always spoke on radio and television. Even here in America, I spoke against anti-Semitism and against what I saw in Auschwitz. But I will say that even Jewish organizations reacted very weakly to my speeches. It is only recently, closer to the 60th anniversary of the liberation of Auschwitz, that this topic became of interest again. I even heard some saying that the stories are not true. I heard appalling and disgusting words such as Jews invented the whole thing. It must have shocked you that uh, the state of Israel was born out of the ashes of the Holocaust that you had witnessed. You know, uh, in the beginnings of the state of Israel, Russia was an ally of Israel, but soon that all changed. But from your vantage point, did it not stun you that there was a Jewish state that somehow through this horrible misery, the Jewish people were able to return to their land and, and build their own country? Рождение государства Израиль – это великое дело. И всеми силами надо поддерживать это государство, потому что это спасение евреев. Сейчас опять мутная волна. The birth of the state of Israel is a wonderful thing. With all our efforts, we have to help to maintain and protect the state because this is what will keep Jews safe. Now again, there is a dirty wave in Europe and especially in Muslim countries, and we must keep the world and Israel safe. Major Anatoly Shapiro is telling you this. I want to thank you for joining us here on Israel National Radio. 
may the Almighty give you many long years. You should live to 120 in good health and continue to have the strength to tell over your testimony. Is there any last message that you want to share with our listeners? Я напоследок хочу сказать, люди, объединяйте усилия против антисемитов, против терроризма. У вас в распоряжении есть радио, телевидение, интернет, есть большие возможности протестовать. At last, I want to say, people, gather all efforts against antisemitism and terrorism. You have all the resources. You have access to radio, television, internet. Speak up. I call on all people in the world to join the efforts to fight this evil that is rising again in different countries. Thank you so much, Anatoly, for joining us here on Israel National Radio, and may the Almighty give you many years of health and strength to continue to deliver your testimony to the world. Thank you.